Okay, sorry. Okay, good. So, do you want to introduce yourself? So, do you want me to introduce myself like I did before? Yeah, that would be good. Okay. My name is Jean Drusto, and I'm the director of the Kent State University Museum. And Kate is my husband's granddaughter. first question. Gender inequality is defined in the dictionary as allowing people different opportunities due to perceived differences based solely on one's gender. It is the prejudicial treatment of an individual or group due to gender. It is usually in terms of the, of the treatment of women. Do you feel that in your own life, either in your professional career or personal life, you have experienced discrimination due to your gender? Yes. Uh, when I first started teaching at Miami University, it was very interesting. The chairman of the Department of Speech and Theater Arts assigned raises depending on your marital status. And if you were a married woman, you didn't get a very large raise because he assumed that your husband was supporting you. And so that went on for a number of years. And then uh, I don't remember now whether it was at Miami or later on at Eastern Kentucky. One year I got a huge raise, and it was because there had been a law passed to try to create more parity uh, between married and unmarried people and not penalize a woman for being married at the expense of a man. Here is a quote from an article exploring gender inequality around the world on the Discovery Channel's website. No society treats women as well as men. That's the conclusion from the United Nations Development Program as written in its 1997 Human Development Report. Almost 50 years earlier, in, in 1948, the United Nations General Assembly had adopted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights which specifies that everyone, regardless of gender, was entitled to the same rights and freedom. The 1997 Human Development Report, as well as every human development report that followed, has highlighted that each country falls short of achieving that goal. On my website, I am focusing on gender inequality in the United States. Do you feel that gender inequality continues to be a big issue in the U.S.? If so, is this surprising to you? I do think it continues to be an issue. I'm going to turn down the volume a little bit. I do believe that it continues to be an issue. I'm not surprised. Uh, gender inequality is so complex in terms of the way the culture has created it and developed and the historical aspect of it that it's very difficult to change. I think that we've made a good deal of progress, but it's typical uh, that we make a couple of steps forward and a step back, and a couple of steps forward and a step back, and sometimes two steps back, and sometimes two steps forward. So it takes a very long time for the culture to progress in terms of gender inequality. So no, it doesn't surprise me. For this project, I have read about the fight for women to vote and the women who work so hard to make it finally happen. Do you have specific memories of women fighting for or gaining more rights throughout your life? Have you been personally involved in any sort of women's rights campaign? Well, I certainly have a lot of memories of the women's rights movement in the 1960s and the 1970s. I don't remember the early suffrage struggles, but I certainly have read a great deal about them. Um, and I haven't participated personally in, in a sort of activist way, but I have supported uh, causes that have uh, had to do with women's rights. Um, so I do think that um, 
there are a lot of aspects to uh, women gaining rights in the 20th and 21st century. A lot of progress was made at the very beginning of the 21st of the 20th century and toward the third quarter of the 20th century. And then it seems to have gone back a bit. And so it, it is a continuing struggle, and you can't forget about it. You can't take for granted any progress that was made before. From your seeing college women every day, and from what you read about this current generation of young women, do you think that young American women today feel that there is a gender gap? What about young men? If so, do you think... Do you think that the difference is felt strongly enough that women in the U.S. would organize together and fight to finally end the inequality? I don't see as much uh, gender inequality in the area in which I work. Remember that my museum is a museum of fashion and decorative arts, and it's attached to a very large fashion school, uh, 1,500 students the majority of whom are women. And so uh, in that context, the women have a very, have a lot of strength and a lot of positive reinforcement. And the men that I have had in my classes uh, seem to be very, uh, very interested in equality. They're not um, angry about it about it. They're, they don't feel the backlash that had been very much a part of the women's movement in the 70s and 80s. So I do think that there still are gender inequality issues. I, I have no question about that. I think um, attitudes are so difficult to change uh, you can't really talk about gender inequality without realizing its complexity, the fact that it it's in the economic uh, situation. It uh, has to do with your social strata. Uh, it has to do with your political um, ideas and, in some cases, your religious beliefs. So it's it's a very, very complex issue. And young people reflect their parents' ideas. And one thing that college does, uh, or is supposed to do, is to open their minds to new ways of thinking. And I do uh, think that that is true, that it does help people overcome a certain amount of, of previous ideas uh, that, and then allows them to promote gender equality more than, than without that experience, without the, the experience of being in a group of, of diverse people with diverse ideas and challenging your own ideas against theirs. It is widely known that girls do not go into the hard sciences as much as boys and then do not end up with some of the higher paying jobs because of this. Why do you think girls won't go into these fields as much? Is it something about how girls are raised or educated? I think it's much to do with the way our culture uh, expects uh, girls and boys to behave. I think women always are faced with a serious choice of whether they're going to have a career or have a family. And... If they have a family, can they have a career later on? Or do they have to try to do both? And if you try to do both, you have to have a very strong support system. And the United States doesn't provide that very easily unless you're wealthy enough to be able to, um, to buy child care or to have child care. Um, some other societies are better at it in, in terms of providing child care for working mothers. But in the United States, you really have to, to think very seriously, what are my responsibilities? What are my primary responsibilities? And then decide at what point in your life you're going to have a career and at what point in your life you're going to have a family. And meld those as much as you can, but, but recognize that there is always a conflict. 
in this situation. So I think uh, there's absolutely nothing to keep a woman from going into any field at all, really. Uh, but certain fields, you have uh, more competition, uh, and you are competing not only with your mind, but you're competing against cultural values and preconceptions. So uh, my, my goddaughter, Sarah Webster, Robinson uh, went to MIT, majored in uh, mechanical engineering, uh, and was one of a very few women at MIT, and managed very well. Uh, so it's not at all impossible. And I think that women have different ways of organizing things, and sometimes that is not clearly understood by men. For example, women tend to organize groups of people on a much more horizontal level uh, where everyone has the same uh, kind of uh, status in the group whereas men tend to be more hierarchical and so when a woman manager comes into a situation that is traditionally hierarchical there are often just difficulties in communicating these two different styles of management um, but there's no, nothing to stop a woman in the sciences or or finance or anything else um, women are now very successful on wall street and they have been for 30 or 40 years uh, there's no reason that that can't happen they're very successful in medicine and they are quite successful in sciences and engineering but you have to uh, overcome societal preconceptions about what you can do and uh, and how well you can do it and when you can do it. Okay. And for my final question, in your field of work, do you see any gender inequality? Well, I don't see gender inequality specifically in um, in the museum field I think for, or in the academic community where you see inequality is in the market forces that are at work in uh, the various departments for example uh, because the university has to compete for faculty with the outside world and with careers that people might have in the outside world. There's competition. And the market forces say, well, in the School of Business, for example, in order to retain excellent faculty, you're going to have to pay them more. Not as much as they could make in the real world, but probably more than you have to pay a museum curator because of the supply and demand there's a greater demand for highly skilled people in business than there might be a demand for highly skilled museum curators. And so um, it, the economy uh, dictates that those people are probably going to be paid more than I'm going to be paid. Uh, but that isn't gender. It's only gender insofar as more men might go into business and more women might go into the arts. But that's a choice that, that an individual makes and it's, it's not um, systemic and, you know, it, it's cultural, but it's not, um, it's not what I would call discriminatory. Anything else, Kate? Nope. Nope. Did, it, did we record?